Hi, my name is Erin Gillespie. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, at Memorial Sloan Kettering. I'm also the founder of eContour. And I'm Ben Nelms, medical physicist and founder of Prono, and we're here to invite you to C3RO, the contouring collaborative for consensus in radiation oncology. A row, a ruction, a fracas and a fray, a rough and tumble free for all, a broiler ball of LA. A ruckus to be reckoned with if anyone wants to dare. We're taking the road to the Donner and down to the Donny Brook affair. I will go, I will meet you there. I will spend a week or two with you and Donny prepare. Accurate contours have been shown to um, improve, improve tumor control and reduce uh, toxicity. But contours defined by different people continue to be highly variable. And that's not good. So we're going to build an international team and we hope to quantify and visualize this variation. And that we you know, have an open conversation about why those variations exist and potentially come to some better consensus. And by building a consensus from a big enough population, we produce outputs that could be helpful in a number of ways. Could consensus contours, for example, be useful as a standard, perhaps more robust than any one individual's opinion? Probably so. Could consensus contours be used as a useful backdrop when we're educating or assessing the skills of an individual? Yes. And could the consensus contours be useful to help validate or even as an input to computerized auto-segmentation algorithms? Probably could. So it's all of these good things that we want to be outputs from the C3RO program. The council's always up in arms to try and take it away. Hey! If you're enthusiastic and excited about advancing the field of radiation oncology, if you have interest in education, training, um, you know, we're looking for people that really want to join this uh, mission to really improve contouring in radiation oncology. Let's talk a little bit about how this process is going to work for every episode of C3RO. First of all, there's the preparation stage. This is where our team of captains finds an appropriate data set, selects which anatomical structures we're going to study, and then prepares the data sets for all the different team members. Then we do the data collection. That's when all of you, the team members, will contour the structures on your own private copy of the data set. You'll be able to do this from home, from work, from anywhere using the Prono cloud-based software. Then we're going to cut off the data collection at some point during each session and we're going to do our calculations. We're going to calculate all the consensus and a bunch of interesting metrics we're going to use in our results presentation. And then finally we'll present those results first via a live web meeting that will not only review the results but also have a question and answer with the team captains but also at least one invited expert. Let's look a little closer here. So if we have n number of team members who contribute contours for that session, we're obviously going to get a lot of different opinions on those contours. So we'll take those as inputs and we'll be able to calculate the consensus as a 3D ISO agreement grid representing the percent agreement. 100% will be where everybody located a voxel inside the target or structure all the way down to where there's very low agreement where few people thought that structure was. And then we'll be able to study a lot of interesting things. Let's talk about some of those. So very important is we just look per structure at metrics of variation. We'll analyze the ISO agreement surfaces in three dimensions. Think, for example, like a gradient index with a dose grid where you're going to have a, a ratio of two volumes. Imagine if we take the volume of a 25% agreement divided by the volume of, say, 75% agreement, just using arbitrary numbers here. As the structure gets more and more variable, that number gets higher and higher. As there's more and more consensus and agreement, that number gets closer and closer to one. This allows us to do something really cool. We can now sort the anatomy from most variable to least variable, and that allows us to identify where we have most to gain by uh, driving out variation and talking about sources of variation. Even beyond that, we can look at any individual versus a population. So we can examine any particular participant or physician versus a particular consensus line. So obviously, we can study the volumes. Dice coefficient is useful to get kind of a relative overlap, but there's a lot of other things we can look at. What's the max difference from an individual to a consensus line? In what direction are most of the larger differences happening? And we can also look and say what percent of the differences are within a certain distance. So we can start to really find out those areas where the variation is high. Again, this just points us to the opportunities for learning, for discussion. 